Man's search for meaning, page 108. The meaning of life. I doubt whether a doctor can answer this question in general terms. For the meaning of life differs from man to man, from day to day, and from hour to hour. What matters, therefore, is not the meaning of life in general, but rather the specific meaning of a person's life at a given moment. To put the question in general terms, would be comparable to the question posed to a chess champion. Tell me, Master, what is the best move in the world? There simply is no such thing as the best, or even a good move, apart from a particular situation in a game and a particular personality of one's opponent. The same holds for human existence. One should not search for an abstract meaning of life. Everyone has his own specific vocation or mission in life to carry out a concrete assignment which demands fulfillment. Therein, he cannot be replaced, nor can his life be repeated. Thus, everyone's task is as unique as his specific opportunity to implement it. As each situation in life represents a challenge to man and presents a problem for him to solve, the question of the meaning of life may actually be reversed. Ultimately, man should not ask what the meaning of his life is, but rather he must recognize that it is he who is asked. In a word, each man is questioned by life. And he can only answer to life by answering for his own life. To life, he can only respond by being responsible. Thus, logotherapy sees in responsibleness the very essence of human existence. The essence of existence. This emphasizes on responsibleness this emphasis on responsibleness is reflected in a categorical imperative of logotherapy, which is live as if you were living already for the second time and as if you had acted the first time as wrongly as you are doing, as you are about to act now. It seems to me that there is nothing which would stimulate a man's sense of responsibleness more than this maxim, which invites him to imagine first that the present is past and second, that the past may yet be changed and amended. Such a precept confronts him with life's finiteness, as well as the finality of what he makes out of both his life and himself. Logotherapy tries to make the patient fully aware of his own responsibleness. Therefore, it must leave him the, op the option for what, to what, or to whom he understands himself to be responsible. That is why a logotherapist is the least tempted of all psychotherapists to impose value judgment on his patients. For he will never permit the patient to pass to the doctor the responsibility of judging. It is therefore up to the patient to decide whether he should interpret his life task as being responsible to society or to his own conscience. There are people, however, who do not interpret their own lives merely in terms of the task assigned to them, but also in terms of the task master who has assigned it to them. Lower therapy is neither teaching nor preaching. It is as far removed from logical reasoning as it is from moral exhortation. To put it figuratively, the role played by a logotherapist is that of an eye specialist rather than of a painter. The painter tries to convey to us a picture of the world as he sees it. An ophthalmologist tries to enable us to see the world as it really is. The logotherapist's role 
consists of widening and broadening the visual field of the patient so that the whole spectrum of potential meaning becomes conscious and visible to him. Declaring that man is responsible and must actualize the potential meaning of his life, I wish to stress that the true meaning of life is to be discovered in the world rather than within man or his own sight, as though it were a closed system. I have termed this constitutive characteristic the self-transcendence of human existence. It denotes the fact that being human always points and is directed to something or someone other than the self, be it a meaning to fulfill or another human being to encounter. The more one forgets himself by giving himself to the cause to serve or another person to love, the more human he is and the more he actually he actualizes himself. What is called self-actualization is not an attainable aim at all for the simple reason that the more one would strive for it, the more he would miss it. In other words, self-actualization is possible only as a side effect of self-transcendence. Thus far, we have shown that the meaning of life always changes, but that it never ceases to be. According to logotherapy, therapy, we can discover this meaning in life in three different ways. Firstly, by creating a work of a work or doing a deed. Secondly, by experiencing something or encountering someone. And thirdly, by the attitude we take toward unavoidable suffering. The first, the way of achievement or accomplishment, is quite obvious. The second and third need further elaboration. The second way of finding a meaning in life is by experiencing something, such as goodness, truth, and beauty, by experiencing nature and culture, or last but not least, by experiencing another human being in his very uniqueness, by loving him. <laughs>